Okay, so y'all went to Tennessee. Yeah, yeah, we went to Tennessee. We fertilized all the kudzu. Fertilized the kudzu? Yeah. Jeez. So that kudzu's good protein, man. Dude, the kudzu, they call it the soybean of the south. Because, like, I mean, basically up there, there might be a bean field like three miles from the place, maybe. Like one be like maybe one bean field. That's it. And ain't soybeans mainly in the south? I mean, yeah, but they in Tennessee where we're at, no. You know, it's not really like farm country, like yeah, down in the Delta and stuff and I mean, yeah, there's a lot of soybeans down here, but Oh, crap. Then yeah, I'm dumb. So I mean East like, Asia. I was close. I mean where we're at, there's not many soybeans because it's just hilly pines yeah you know that kind of stuff so those soybeans that's why that book i killed in august that's why them that book and all the other books i was there. supposed to say all those like 16 bucks you had in the all, video, they were all around yeah. those they might that, that, that cuts yeah them. they might not be there come october or you know mid-october they're gone but freaking august september they're yeah. all in that kudzu so we went up and fertilized pretty much all that kudzu with triple 13 just to make it sweeter and i don't know really make it grow i guess most people that's what crazy most people don't like kudzu but if you're somewhere where there's not a lot of crops and stuff early season that's well they, they, they don't around. like it because it takes over yeah i know it takes over every bit of the tree Everything. but that helped me that where have. i sat and that when i put those sticks up last year because all that kudzu was there and i was just are like, you talking about like as far as far as cover, yeah, yeah, it's almost impo it's almost too much though, because it was that was like the only tree I could get on there was so much kudzu. That's what I'm saying. That's why yeah. people hate it. But before they turn brown, if you can find some good kudzu, man, that's the. I even saw uh, Lee, the guy off seat one. He yeah. said that's the re one of the big reasons. Obviously, genetics and age, all those deer in Atlanta got so big. All them deer got so big because of age and genetics, but there's a ton of kudzu in Atlanta just everywhere on the side of the road. They put it for ir or for um, erosion. erosion, erosion, yeah, and it's just everywhere. And he said he thinks that's you know one of the big reasons why they got so big because it's just like they just sit there and eat it all day, bed in it, eat it while they're bedded, you know. I'm gonna say another reason is because they're eight and a half years old. Yeah, I mean that's the that's the that's the number one. That's reason. the biggest one. Yeah, that's the biggest. You one. got freaking one sixties walking around yeah. the backyards of, of people's property, and they're just yeah. never getting shot at, and they're just eating scraps and table food and just hanging out. God, can you imagine just looking in your backyard and a hundred and ninety inch deers are standing there? I, I remember, like, for example, when we were in Montana. The first time I ever went to Montana, I'm not going to say the town, but in that town, I remember, golly, I'm tired. It's 8.30. It's ridiculous. Dude, Arlen tried to We're get out. We're doing this for y'all, you 100 people that Heck watch us yeah. every week. And, and that one guy, he commented on Facebook. He's like, I'm one of y'all 72. We're doing this for you, brother. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, no. Uh, I was talking about Arlen getting up. And talking about Montana. Yeah, so... Went to Montana the first time and went to this town that our friends live in. Mm -hmm. And I saw the most realistic bow target I had ever seen in this backyard. Mm -hmm. And the reason it was because it was a real deer. <laughs> it was a real, I thought, it was a target. I thought, I literally thought that somebody had a eight point buck mounted, like the full body stuffed. And set it right there in front of a, a, a chain link fence. Because it was like just house, 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 house. And all their yards had, you know, little chain link fences around them. And uh, nothing fancy. And there were deer everywhere. There were white-tailed deer. <laughs> white-tailed bucks. Yeah. Like they were, and, and some of them were gnarly. I mean, and, uh, and I was just like, what's going on? Oh. Yeah, they never get hunted. Of course they're going to yeah. be this big. It's like going to Cage Cove and right. Yeah. Around. I love Cage Cove. <laughs> we've we've only been there. I've only been there once and when I went, we saw four does and four, we saw four does and two black bears. What time of year did y'all go? I can't remember. It was cold. It was it was cool cuz we had to wear jackets. We went in the that. summer one time and didn't see 
It was like that. We didn't see anything, but I remember we went one time. We saw a bunch of bucks. So probably just depends when you. Yeah, ready. if it's like the rut. I was like, you imagine going in like November, December when it's rut. Well, we went in December uh, one year, and we saw. I took a video of a big eight point. He's probably 140 inches. Uh, he was just behind this. There's one of those old churches there or whatever. Mm-hmm. He was just back there behind it, just tearing trees up, like really? just rubbing the crap out of them. <laughs> it was cool. We were like 10 yards from him. God. Man, speaking of rubbing, it's April the 11th, and I'm coming up in the turkey woods. I'm coming up on fresh rubs and scrapes. Well, not rubs, but I'm coming up on fresh scrapes a lot. Really? And it's not scratching. No, it's it's like... It's probably, you know, left over from the season, you think? No, I think they're still, scra- I think they're still scraping. <laughs> probably. These deer There's, down here, they breed all year. I'm telling you. They, they make our bucks. They're real. <laughs> I'm telling you. I remember two Aprils ago, me and a buddy of mine were coming out of uh, coming out of the turkey woods, it was April the twentieth, yeah. and a and an eight point come out come out and cross the road chasing a doe, and well, we were both like, "What the heck?" It's nearly May. Speaking of going to Tennessee, I checked one of the cameras to see if they were all holding because I had quite a few bucks coming to that that food plot where I killed that buck, and mm-hmm. and um, there was, I guess they probably most of them all held their racks until about March twenty seventh. 28th and then they were they're all gone they're all shed i, I don't hmm. think i think there might be one buck i had on camera like last week that had like one side maybe you gonna go up there and shed hunt i don't know i i mean i've i already walked some but now that i know they're shed i kind of want there's that one buck that i called larry bird that's probably like seven mm-hmm. he was coming to that food pot every night and i feel like his sheds are close but that like i said it's kudzu like yeah, who wants it's, to go it's, digging around in a bunch of cuds? It's though? about to be, you know, it's green enough. <laughs> it's about to be probably pretty thick. So yeah, I don't know. Yeah, don't I'm know with you. I, I don't know if I shed hunted or not. I found a shed this year on government land. Really? Was it a big one? Oh, monster! It was like a little B six point. <laughs> but <laughs> anyways, welcome back, episode nine. Just your average hunter. It's just us again. Yep. We don't got our buddy Corey here anymore. He left us. He said, y'all suck. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he did. Oh, we're going to have Mark Williams on. So, Mark, Mark is, uh, he's coming on next week. Um, so, Mark and his brother Jamie have their own company it's called Swine Life. All right. A lot of people around here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but they work, they work for Malcolm Reed as well. Mm-hmm. So, for how to barbecue right yeah his channel um yeah, mark's if you coming. tried mississippi grit mississippi grit yeah I, I don't even know what else they have i just know my uh brother-in-law he was like this stuff right here is good we went and got some and yeah man, it's freaking good yeah well i didn't i didn't know that y'all had any i'd never had it before but you know when i saw it and, and i saw the label it says swine life i was like that's Mark's. That's Mark's company. Yeah, and uh, tried it, and Lord, we didn't have those steaks like marinating Nothing. or anything. We just threw some. What do you call it? Mississippi grit. Yeah, Mississippi we grit. We just threw that on there and threw it on the grill, and it was good. I think it's like just a combo of salt, garlic, yeah, pepper, maybe some other things. But like, it's real. It's not too seasoned anywhere. You're like, dang, mm-hmm. this is too much. But it's like, it's good. Yeah, yeah. That's all we had on it. Yeah, yeah. That's really all you need, too. Yeah. Depending on how you like your steaks or whatnot, but uh, but yeah, I'm gonna have we're gonna have him on next week. Yeah. He'll be here. I think he's coming Sunday night, and he'll be here uh, Monday. And I think he'll head out. I think he'll head out Tuesday. So we probably need to do it Monday night. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. Probably so. Yeah. But we're gonna hunt. Me and him are going to hunt um, it's almost, Monday and Tuesday. Yeah, I know. It's almost it's almost, it's almost over. over. What's crazy, though, is in Tennessee, it, start, it starts this weekend. And yeah. then it goes all the way to May 26th. Oh, well, what most people don't realize, if you think about it, it's April the 11th. Season's already been here a month in Mississippi. I know. Four Dude, days from a month, shy time, of a month. Time freaking flies. Yeah. You know, your parents are always like, when you get older, time flies. Dude, I was thinking about that today. Yeah. I, I was know. looking at Arlen, and I was like, what the heck, man? Like, I it know. seems like every day we, he wakes up, and he's just talking more and more and more and more. And I'm like, because. You, know you know why it flies by so fast? Because you're so busy. No. 
It's because, like, when you're a kid, you've only lived, like, a year, two, three years. And so, so six like, months is a half a lifetime. <laughs> yeah, and then when you get to be, like, our age, 27, 28, 29, and yeah. then, you, you know, a year's nothing compared to that 28 years. Yeah, can you imagine when you get, like, 80? I know. Like, what these dudes are, th- well, they're thinking, I'm it's, about out. It's like my wife's like, uh, grand uh, grandfather, I think he's, I think he turned 80 this year, and he was, like, at Thanksgiving, he was, like, dang, time's just going by so fast. I can only imagine. It's just, like, probably crazy. Yeah, dude, we were... I used to talk to my grandfather a lot about that, like how, because Papa Archie's 84, mm-hmm. I think, and I mean, just imagine, like, you can you can remember certain things around that preschool, kindergarten age, that four or five year, that was 80 years ago for him. Can you Freaking imagine, like, World he was- World War II was going on. Yeah, I mean, he was, uh, God, that was back in 19, was he born in 1930? Or forty, nineteen forty. I think he was. I think he was a forties baby, mm-hmm. early forties though. But it's like he used to come to town. Um, I think he said they they would come to town every now and then on a horse and buggy. Mm-hmm. You know, and that was kind of <laughs> normal. Yeah. Back then, in the, in the forties and the fifties here yeah. in Mississippi. You know, the cars or automobiles, as they would call them. Automobiles. You know, but can you imagine, like, going from that to where you could buy land around here? You you could buy 100 acres back in 1950 for, you know, $10,000, $5,000. That's crazy. And now that won't even buy you. Sometimes it won't even buy you an acre. Well, she, like, me and Dad were talking about earlier because my nan and granddaddy had, a, like, a home phone until, like, maybe, like, two years ago. Mm-hmm. And it was like, I wonder, like, how many people actually have home phones still. I remember talking to my first girlfriend on that thing. Yep. Like, I remember our first home. I remember our <laughs> home phone number, you know. Yeah, I do, too. I do, too. That's crazy. And then like, we had the, the dial-up internet. Uh-huh. Because, like, That's if you were dad- on the phone. Yeah, and it, yeah. It yeah, cut the internet up. Yeah, it cut the internet. But like, get off the phone. <laughs> like, all right, babe, I love you. Bye. <laughs> yeah, because I dad's like, on the internet. That's what I was asking dad. I was like, what'd you like? Did you what'd you pay? For, like, how'd you pay for like home phone or whatever? And he was like, well, it was like a home internet bundle. And you yeah, got internet and a home phone. Mm-hmm. And he's had the old, the old. I remember my mom and papa having the one that had the little, like the little. Curly the cord. rotary dial? Yeah, and had the yeah. curly cord. Yeah. I used to, I remember my cousins beating us up with that. <laughs> <laughs> I used to talk about James, I bet. <laughs> no, I think, yeah, probably. Yeah? <laughs> it's probably no, James. I think, yeah, well, yeah, it was James. If you're listening, James, you remember. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> no, that was. Uh, well, actually, James was pretty cool. I think it was the, I think it was the girls, actually. And yeah. The mean ones. <laughs> yes. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Yeah. It's come on. It's crazy. Just even like the last fifteen years, how much phones have changed. Because I remember having the little, little Nokia, uh, uh, the one that slid up, the Walkman. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I thought you was gonna talk about that blue well, Nokia. Yeah, the Nokia. Nokia, like you flipped up and played Snake on. No, this is not the one you flipped up. This was like a oh small, the blue, yeah, yeah, the, the blue, blue phone. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah you remember yeah, that? Yeah. It, had, it had the Snake game. Yeah, but it's like you could take that and kill somebody <laughs> with it. And drown it and then make three phone calls back to back to back. It would, his battery life would last for like four weeks. <laughs> yeah. could, I mean, you didn't have to charge it ever. Yeah, I know it. How did a phone that old you could freaking work, use for three or four weeks and not charge oh, it? Now the man. ones you got to charge it every six hours. Well, That's I remember what all the stuff we're doing on them. When me and you were kids, uh, you remember sharing ringtones was big? Oh, yeah. You remember that? You had to have somebody. Them. Where somebody would send you if they got a ringtone and it mm-hmm. was like a famous song or yeah. something, you'd be like, "Oh, dude, give me that, give me that," yeah. and you'd have to multi, you'd have to multimedia, multimedia message. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> See, my parents wouldn't let me have that because they wouldn't want me to have uh, the chance to send pictures and receive <laughs> pictures from girls. Yeah. So they didn't let me have that, and, which is smart. And before that, you had to like, I'm pretty sure you had to like record the ringtone, like. Oh yeah, Speared you had to put your phone up to the to the radio. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. That was about when that was back when MySpace was big. Yep. When you'd get on somebody's you MySpace to, you had to get your uh, song. You or had whatever. to get your song on there. Yep. I remember that one time. So cool. My song's this. Yep. Like, Mine was Lollipop one time. Yeah, yeah. Lollipop. Did I tell you the story about my mom yeah. and Lollipop? Yeah. 
Yeah. She, oh my gosh. She made me read the lyrics to that song in like eight Lollipop grade. Lollipop by Lil Wayne. Yep. Not the Three Six Mafia one. The, nope. The Lil, Wayne Lil Wayne. Yeah. She pulled up to the field house and picked me up from practice one day and she literally just threw a piece of paper at me as soon as I got in. And I was like, what the heck is this? And I, I look at it and as soon as I see it at the middle of the page, it says Lollipop by Lil Wayne lyrics. And I was like, oh, crap. <laughs> and, I, and I knew what was coming. She's like, read it. Read it out loud. Every word, word for word. And I had to beg her like halfway through it to stop. Like I was like, Mom, I do not want to keep reading this. She's like, well, that's what you're listening to. I saw it on your daddy's computer that you had downloaded it from LimeWire. <laughs> oh, LimeWire. Putting viruses on the yeah. computer. Yeah. 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 I was like, ugh, but... It didn't make you stop listening to it, though. No. <laughs> no. It didn't work. Paused for a couple of weeks, but no. That and Old Temperature by Sean Paul. That was the jam. Yeah. Dude, that song got me hyped as an eighth grader. Anytime it comes on, I'm yes. just like, Oh, come on the way that time. Go. <laughs> yeah, buddy. I like that one. That's what I'm talking about. Heck yeah. I'm going to play that the next time I go turkey hunting. Hey, look at this right here. This is this was on the cameras up there. Check this bad boy out. Holy Lord. Dad, go. <laughs> Hit that gum beard. Hey. Wait a minute. Hold up, cuz. Hold up. No, they all Back up, Terry. That's one beard. Uh -huh. There's two beard. That's three. Three beard. Yeah. And then. What are we doing? What are we doing sitting here? That one right there. I think that's the one with the long Yeah. Beard. And then. Yeah. That's how we're going. <laughs> well, I mean, we can't go, go until, you know. Yeah, but we can. We can. <laughs> we can. <laughs> We could sneak in there. Your dad would never be the wiser. <laughs> no, he's you cool know. though. He's he's go. He said that he would go like and call and stuff. Yeah, he knows the place too because he's hunted for five years. Yeah, there you go. Well, we pulled up today. That was cool. We pulled up today. This first time Amelia had been there, and we mm -hmm. pulled up, and there were turkeys in that first food plot. <sighs> they were right there, and Dad like jumped out and grabbed her out of the the car seat, and like because you kind of see down to it, and he was like uh -huh. trying to point them out there. The whole rest of the trip, she was like. Where the turkeys at? Where the turkeys at? Where are they? Yeah. And it's like, we're trying to find them. Yeah. And she's like, they're in the woods. It's, it's crazy. Like kids at this age, you try to get them excited about it, uh -huh. but, but you want them to be quiet. Oh yeah. No. And it's like, that ain't happening. I know we had some turkeys outside our house the other day and I, I've got Arlen and I picked him up and I was like, look, Arlen, there's turkeys. There's turkeys out in the middle. Yeah. They're right there in the pasture. And he's like, he looks, and he finally, finally sees them. And he's like, Turkey! And I'm like, well, <laughs> they're gone now, buddy. But yeah, you see them. Yeah, we got we got her to ride on the uh, the side by side. That was a big that was a big thing. She don't she don't like loud stuff. I think that's what scares her is like mm -hmm. the loudness of it. And yeah, she was fine after we got to go and she was going down the little hills. She was like, "Wee!" So she was having fun. <laughs> she was having fun doing it. Arlen liked uh, he liked tractors a lot at first, and when. Sean rode him on a darn side by side. Mm -hmm. Ever since then, he's been obsessed. Really? Yeah. Oh, he'll he'll man, he'll blow off a tractor. You <laughs> know, to ride on side by side, yeah. dude. Like he's he's all about it. Oh yeah. So, well, what are you gonna do when uh, turkey season ends? This three month gap of just nothing. I'm gonna fish. You gonna fish? You dang right. I love fishing. I got that old boat. Man, old, it's got perfect. The old pole right here. No, I'm talking about like you lines. Know, yeah, line fishing. Yeah, I like, I like bass fishing. Man, I ain't going out there in the darn sun and sweating my gonads I'm off at a hundred degrees. Set the hook on one of them big summer guns. I, you <gasps> see, I like bass fishing and crappie fishing, and that's all what that. I want to do because I ain't been crappie, crappie. Crappie fishing, yeah. It's good if you could, if you could get into a bass sub. And I know the guy, Jimmy Dean Beard. That summer gun, he's on them down there at Grenada Lake. So, oh, Grenada's got them. Yeah, Grenada, dude. That's what's crazy. <clears throat> if you're not from Mississippi and you're watching this, which I don't know, maybe we have some out of staters, but freaking Sardis, Enid, and what you call it, I bet you've been there because, yeah, like, it's like I don't know, those are the three best lakes in the whole country. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it is. Like, I'd be, I'd yeah. meet people in St. Louis, they'd be like, You're from Mississippi, we're going down to. Sardis. I'm like, you're going to Sardis? And they're like, uh -huh. yeah, we're going to Sardis Lake, Enid Lake, and Grenada Lake. We hit all three of them. Yep. Yep. But, but 
somebody told me the other day they were like it's gotten so crazy it's just like packed like all those oh lakes. it's just like anything else if it's good it'll be good for a little while and then it'll get packed and you know, get kind of mediocre yeah, you know i know and then it'll take a while to get good again but i just don't know about going out there and wading in some snake infested waters trying to catch crappie up in the edge of that stuff i see people doing that I think that'd be kind of fun. It'd I'll tell you fun, what I like to do. It'd be sketchy. And that's grabbling. I don't know about it, man. Or noodling. <laughs> yeah. well, I don't know why they call it noodling when they're grabbing a fish. Yeah. Excuse me, because one group will say grabbling, and then another group will say... Will they stick a noodle up in there and make sure it's... No. Like not a snake or snapping turtle? No. Let's see, that's my thing. Well, if you stick your hand up in there, you come out with no fingers. It's a snapping turtle. That's... Yeah. The risk you take. That's the risk you take. <laughs> Yep, Sounds that'd like be my luck too. Mississippi first time, stuff. they'd they'd catch six fish in front of me. Be like, "All right, Trent, it's okay. Nothing's gonna happen to you." As soon as I stick my <laughs> hand in there, it pulls out a nub. I'm like, "Well, <laughs> there goes my turkey hunt." There day. goes. <laughs> I'm shooting your left, left hand. handed. You better from use home. your left hand. That'll be my time. prop, right yeah. there. <laughs> yeah. That, ugh. Yeah, you better go with your left hand the first shot just to make sure. In yeah. Case you lose a few. It's just your left hand. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But no, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, try to run some lines or, or do some jug fishing, and I got a buddy, um, Philip Smith. I may we may end up having him on the podcast too, um, but he he's got a bow fishing rig <clears throat> down there around yeah. Vicksburg. That'd be fun. And yeah, yeah, I'm gonna go with him a time or two this summer, um, but yeah, I, I'm gonna. I would like. I got to a lot of I got a lot of brownie points that I have. Um, that I've used up since October, yeah, and still you using run, them. You run I'm, I'm fix, yeah, I'm running low <laughs> on the brownie points, yeah. so I'm probably gonna do a lot of building and a lot of saving up. Yeah, during you know, the summer. During the summer, yep. yeah. Go to the water park. Oh, go, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You just do those. Do those. You know. Um, uh, why don't we go up to Bay Springs Lake? Dude, we need to the beach. You know, yeah. We just go to the beach all the well, time. Well, I was talking, you know, like I was Bree, and she was talking to me because uh, I don't like doing that. Like, <laughs> I've dude, been I once. Like, I like going to the lake. I had rather go on the edge of the Ten Tom. Why don't you just take that? Why don't you take your boat out on the river and just let the kid go to one of them sandbanks and just let the kids play? We could. That'd be fun. We could. I, we did it last year. Yeah. We were we the most redneck folks there, though. <laughs> Because, I mean, you're looking at a 1448 with J.B. Weld all over the back of it from where somebody shot it with a shotgun. But uh, it floats and it gets you there. Yeah. So You could probably pull a tube behind it. Get you one of them little anchor things. You pull a tube behind that thing. That's right. Yeah. You drown. <laughs> just about it. <laughs> yeah. A little 20-horse mercury ain't going to pull you very hard. Dude, our clover up in Tennessee, though, That's I mean, that stuff looked good. When we went up there today. When did y'all? When did y'all? When do you plant cr- uh, clover? Is it in? Uh, is it so in the spring? M- most people just. I mean, the best way to do it. It's hard to plant it in the spring because it's so wet. It's hard to like disc up or anything. Mm-hmm. So you can frost seed it in the spring. Like basically, the ground contracting when it freezes at night, warms up in the day. Uh, frost seed because they're little bitty seeds. That works pretty good. We did a, we did that this year, but we also planted a lot of these spots in the fall. Hmm. But it don't come up good in the fall. It comes up some, but it's not like in the springs when it like really grows. <clears throat> so, I mean, I I'll say that domain uh, seed that we used. I mean, it came up pretty dang good in the uh, fall. Hmm. And it's supposed to. I guess in the south it don't matter as much because it don't get as cold because clover will pretty much stop growing once it gets frost on it. Yeah, but it stays so warm here. It's like you might get a frost, and then ten days later it might be seventy five, and it grows some more. Mm-hmm. But I mean, that's the main thing as far as hunting related stuff. We'll probably do in the summers just making. Sure, that's the hard thing about clovers, making sure you keep it from getting overgrown with weeds or like. Can you till it up every year? And that's the good thing about clover. It lasts for three to five years. So oh, as really? long as you keep it up, like basically. Spray it in the spring. We got to do that in a few weeks. Spray it in the spring. Kill all the weeds. We like cleft of them because it won't hurt the clover. And we had some good chicory out there too. But spray it. Kill all the weeds. And then the only thing you have to do through the summer mainly is when it gets like flowered out, how clover will flower. Mm -hmm. Like basically it's a flower to it. Once it gets to that point, you mow it to down to about four to six inches. 
And then when you mow it, all those seeds reseed itself. So then it just keeps growing and getting more lush and lush and lush. Holy cow. Yeah, clover's awesome because you can literally plant that stuff. And if as long as you take care of it and don't let the weeds get crazy. Last year we let the weeds get kind of crazy. We didn't keep up with it as good. Mm -hmm. And it kind of the weeds choked it out a little bit. Yeah. Or if you have a really, really, really bad drought in the summer and it might like kind of kill it. But I mean, most time it comes back. Like we Man, got, we're bad susceptible to that, though. Yeah, no, that's the thing. We have a lot of we have a lot of periods uh, throughout the summer that it's it's just super dry, dry. Yeah. and then we'll have two months or a month where it does nothing but rain, and then two months it won't rain a drop. I know, you but know? that's what's cool about the stuff. Literally, we got one food pot that's been there since we got the place. Like this will be the sixth season we've had it. We thought that the weeds had choked it out. It was done. We went back, We Dad hit it with some uh, O2020 last time we were there because he was like, there's a little bit of clover out here. Like some of the weeds had died through the winter and stuff. And I was like, there's a little clover out here. We came back today mm -hmm. and I mean, it it come back. And it's really? been six years that stuff's been out there. Which yeah, we frost yeah. seeded it. Some. That's the other good thing you can do with the frost seed though. You can just keep frost seeding every spring and it just keeps on coming back. Right. And deer freaking love it. Yeah. They like corn too. Oh, yeah, they like corn. <laughs> <laughs> we did. They, that, I, that's the thing that sucks about Tennessee. It's illegal. Corn's illegal. But we planted it, and I mean, I thought it worked pretty good, but unless you got like a three-acre, five-acre field, like we planted like like a half-acre here, half-acre there. That stuff mm -hmm. was like gone by like <laughs> mid-October maybe. Really? Like they knocked it down, eat it all. Like it was gone. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to plant that pasture behind the house in corn. I've talked about doing it in clover. I've talked about, um, I've asked Mr. Roy, because uh, it's his pasture. But You're talking about the one, like the big pasture? Across, across yeah, the across big the fence? Yeah, yeah, that's Mr. Roy's. Yeah. And um, he's he's on board to do most of that stuff, you know, too. Yeah. Um, but I've thought about doing corn. Just, just planting regular corn and letting it grow up, mm -hmm. you know, not spray it or nothing like that. Just letting it go natural. And then you and can, when you do, when you freaking take a mower or something, wait till about first week of the season or right before the first week of the season, take a mower and mow you some down. Oh, we can bush hog the whole thing. Yeah, bush hog like a section of it. Yeah. And they will do. Dad bush hogged this one section of one of those corn plots two years ago when we had it. And it was like the camera, it was like kind of we were getting pictures of deer. It Probably being grown up, you couldn't see them as good. But, I mean, we were getting some pictures. He mowed that section out, and there was like for like a week straight, there was just deer everywhere. I'm, how uh, how early do you plant corn? I think you plant it in like, it's pretty early, like May. Probably May. May. It's just I think it just depends on when it's dry enough. And then they got all them different kinds of, like lengths of corn, like as far as like, they got like 90 day corn or 100 day corn, 107 day corn. It's supposed to like to be when it matures. Yeah. So like if you planted it in May, you would want to get like, let's say probably like 100 day corn at least or 110 day or 120 day, just so it's like fully matures about when season starts, you know. I was going to say, because you'd want it, you'd want it, I would want it for that velvet season. Mm, that, so, yeah, that's, yeah, you'd want it to mature, be mature at like that point. Yeah, that velvet season would be a good point. But you could also, you know, plant it in June or July and hope it, you don't have a drought and do like a 70-day corn and it'd be the same way. It's just, I don't know, I think it's a lot to do with like getting it at the right time when you're not going to have a drought and it actually growing. Yeah. I might I might talk to Mr. Roy about that. We might do that behind the house. Don't plant soybeans. Really? Yeah, you need like a dead gum five to eight acre field. Are they gonna like I litter? think that's about what we got. We got well we got I think it's that field's probably it's probably like three four, ain't it? Three or four. Four acres. You might could do it, just depending on how many deer you got there, but they will freaking mow that before it even gets up. Like, really? Dad tried to plant beans up there in Tennessee and I mean these mm. were like acre plots, but like I mean, they were gone with literally within like three weeks. Like, did y'all did y'all just throw it out, scatter it, or did no, he you like drilled it. you drilled it? He drilled it, yeah. Yeah. And I mean, they ate it within a month. It was gone. It like came up out of the ground about this far, and it was gone. Good Same Lord. way last year, we planted that field of uh, where I shot the buck. We planted it with cow peas, and I feel like 
Some of it lasted a little while, but I mean, they picked that stuff so fast. Cow peas regrows though, I think, when they nip it, like it regrows mm -hmm. itself or something. So that would be better. I think we're gonna plant it again this year. And we used like a company and did like one of the mixes. Yeah. It was straight weeds. Huh. I, th I don't know, I was just, I, I think you're better off getting like, what we're gonna do this year is get cow peas and sun hemp and just plant it, the, just those two seeds together. Yeah. So the basically the sun hemp grows and the cow peas like wraps around it and grows up it. Yeah. So I think that'll work though. Y'all just keep doing what you're doing. You're growing big deer. <laughs> yeah. I, dude, that's, that's you're one growing big deer. I love planting like food plots and stuff. That's yeah. just, it's just fun. I think if we had a place that, you know, you could hold some deer on, um, it would be fun to do the same thing. Dude, that's what you need to do. You need to, if if he'll let you do it, plant that whole field in corn, but then plant behind your garden back to mm -hmm. that end of that you, plant that in clover. You'll have deer hitting that clover coming up out of that bottom hit the clover and then go out into the corn for the evening and you can kill them right there in that little spot i bet well we they don't really come up right there behind the house because it's right there behind the house I know, yeah. and the they feed up from that bottom and come out into that field um or do like the front like do some of the that field maybe a little like a strip or something in clover and then do the rest in corn or something shoot i'd, I'd just do the whole thing in the <clears> corn <throat> you know yeah and then, and then basically, you know, you've got a field that um, there in September, mm -hmm. like you said, you can bush hog it. And, and then leave half of it for like late season. Yeah. They'll be out there hammering it. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Leave half, yeah, leave, yeah. The, leave the rest and, and you got, that's gun season right there. Well, then another thing, you, cool thing you can do with corn that we did when we had the corn is you can go in there once it's like the deer got into it and kind of knocked it down a little bit. It's gotten brown and, you know, it's yeah. just not so thick. Go through there and literally just take a hand seeder and just spread wheat all through it and it'll grow all really? in that corn. It'll be wheat all in there. Do you have to, uh, I know when we did a garden last year with corn, we had to plant each each seed, yeah. you know, each each piece of corn, but... Um, do you have to do the same thing like with a big field or can you literally like scatter it? I think you can scatter it, but I just don't know how, I think it does a lot better when it's like in rows, you know, but I think you can scatter I wonder, it. I wonder if you could scatter it and then run over it with a disc. Yeah. I mean, you could, I just don't know if it like would. Cause you could, cause then the, the, the animals couldn't get to it near as easily. I don't know if it would like overcrowd itself. If it like, you just spread it, you know? Yeah. I don't know. Because how, how do you plant a whole big four-acre field without a planter? Yeah, that's the hard thing. That would Find be. somebody that's got one. <laughs> yeah. That's what Dad did. He, yeah. he he had a buddy that had a like a drill, and mm -hmm. he used his. Or he might have even got the guy to actually come drill it, I think. Because I yeah. think it was like one of our neighbors that had one. They plant corn. Yeah. And he got him just to come drill it one day. Hmm. But that's another thing. Corn's expensive. Is it? I think so. I think I remember him telling me it was like, it was a I mean, it wasn't cheap. It was like, just to do like a few acres was like, you know, like a thousand bucks. Oh, no, I ain't doing that. 500 to a thousand bucks. A thousand dollars? 500 to a thousand bucks, you know, I don't know no, exactly. No, I ain't doing that. No, never mind. To do four acres? Yeah, it'd probably be. A thousand dollars. I was thinking, I was thinking a few hundred dollars. Well, that's what's crazy. You Good. know, you talk about like, these, living. you talk about these like Midwest places where yeah. you like, you le let's say you lease. 150 acres and there's like a 20 acre cornfield on it and mm -hmm. you're like i'm gonna see if this farmer will leave me you know let will see if he'll leave me a spot right over here this little acre in the corner so i can hunt it mm -hmm. well you gotta think about it, it probably cost him 500 to a thousand bucks to plant that acre 500 let's say it cost him 500 bucks to plant that acre yeah well there's 500 bucks and then let's say he was gonna make a thousand bucks on it and he's cut he's mowing it or leaving it for you uh-huh that's 1500 bucks on top of your lease just to leave leave you an acre yeah that's crazy yeah that is crazy good lord have mercy man well <laughs> screw that <laughs> I ain't doing that. Just plant clover, man. It's good. Yeah. It plant, works. Yeah. It plant lasts clover for five years. Grass. Five years. Yeah. 
five years. That's three, pretty good. Three to five years, but you got to mow it and, you know, kind of keep it. See, I just don't think I'm going to upkeep it. Yeah. I just, I'm, I probably just do the same thing I've always done. Honestly, just though. Like grass. Dr. Uh, Strickland down at Mississippi State, he yeah. said, I remember watching him on something. He said, actually, you don't have to mow it. You can spray it and kill the weeds, and then who cares if their weeds are in it? Mm-hmm. All these people want it to look pretty. We do, too. We want it to be this pretty clover field, but the deer eat the native weeds. I was going to say, they eat the weeds. You just don't want it to choke it out because it can yeah. choke it out pretty easy. Clover clover's definitely, that's something I thought about doing for not only for the deer, you know, their early fall, but also springtime turkeys. Dude, them turkeys were out in it today yeah. when we pulled up. They yeah. were out there in it. They yeah. love that stuff. What was that? Uh, somebody was telling me the other day that they plant a lot of chufa. Have you heard chufa? of that? Chufa. It's like no. turkeys love it. I don't know. I don't even know what it is. But Tell my chops. I know what some chops are. I don't know what chops are. That's crushed corn. No, this is like a plant, like chufa. It's oh. like a some kind of little plant, but they love it. No, I ain't heard of that. What? No. No, no, I, I know it was. A, I know who it was. It was a guy. He's telling me he plants it every year for like a food plot. But like, I think deer maybe a little bit, but turkeys like love it. Yeah, I tell you what they like, man. That's a that gun burn ground. <clears throat> oh yeah, you can find some burn ground. Yeah. Oh yeah, these a lot of these management areas, man. They do they burn a lot on oh, like the WMAs or yeah, a lot of a lot of your WMAs in springtime gonna burn. Dang. Uh, it helps. For like tree growth, mm-hmm. you know, burning out a lot oh, of competition yeah. and all that. But mm-hmm. on top of that, it's good for the wildlife too, because man, everything's after, fresh, dude. After yeah. like two weeks after a burn, especially if you can have like we have, mm-hmm. like you can have a couple of good rains. Mm-hmm. That's where that's where you'll kill a bird because it's just gonna be nothing but it look fairway green in there. Yeah. And uh, and there'll be birds all in that stuff, man. There'll be birds all in it when it's burning, like when it's smoking. Uh, there'll be birds all in eating it. the yeah like bugs and yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah. It's a cooked meal for them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like that gum. They done grilled us up some. Yeah, bugs. it's just it is hard to hunt it in some areas just because you're wide open. It's ash. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I mean yeah. it's just it's just tree and black. Yeah. yeah. That's it, you know, you smoke and, and you wearing a fully green camouflage you. pattern here. You're the only bush in the woods that you, survives. You just got to wear your robbery outfit. Yeah. <laughs> Ski mask, everything. Yeah. Blacked yeah. out. That would work. Yeah. You'd look like the bottom of a pine tree. <laughs> you would. That's We're planning on doing that this summer up there. Is, or maybe I robbing guess. somebody. <laughs> yeah. What? <laughs> yeah, we got robbed last year. Yeah, we're I was going to say, that'd be par for the course <laughs> around no, there. We're planning on, they're cutting some, so we're planning on burning after they cut once some sunlight can get in. And oh, yeah. That should be like money. Yeah. I feel like that's going to be crazy. Dude, I tell you, that, that would have been a job that I'd have gotten into. Like forestry? Burning. Just burning. I know. Just, I want to I go when they do it and help because I feel like it'd be fun. Oh, it, they, I love burning anything. I'm like my papa Jimmy, man. When, awesome. they, when he when he <laughs> run out of money and couldn't pay the mortgage, he just burned the house for insurance money. <laughs> I am not kidding. That's a true story. He'd just burn it. And uh, I don't know, man. It's just nothing like just taking some boxes outside. And yeah, we got, that, we got a little pit over here. We burn boxes oh, all the time. Man, Dude, I, love I picked stuff. up. Uh, you know them huge black uh, trash bags? Yeah. I filled that thing up with pine cones the other day and then dumped them all in that <laughs> and lit that song yeah. up. Yeah. Heck yeah. <laughs> it was burning. I know pine cones are some, they are flammable. Yeah. It Let was, me tell you. Yeah. A couple times I put a box on top of them and it got kind of woo, went up in the air a little yeah. bit and landed on the side <laughs> and I was like, oh yeah. gosh, I'm about to burn the yard down. <laughs> I was yep. like, stop. <laughs> yep. They ain't nothing they ain't nothing worse than, than lighting a fire when the wind's blowing. And, and you just thinking Ah, it'd be all right. And then about five seconds later you're like, I don't know if it's gonna be all right. <laughs> like it's you get that fast. one thing. Honey, get the get the garden hose. <laughs> Hurry up. Hurry up. Oh yeah. Yeah. But I mean, yeah. yeah, I yeah. I think, you know, burning the place this year, we should I feel like we might see over the next, if we burn it this year, it might be next year, but if we burn it this year, I think the next three years we'll see like the biggest bucks we've seen just because it's like fresh nutrition everywhere. Yeah, could be. 
That's why I've had it for six seasons. Mm -hmm. Have you all seen a difference from this season to our last season from the first season you bought it? Oh, yeah. We, I mean, we had some okay books, like first two years. We had it, we had maybe, I think the biggest book we probably had on camera was 120, 125 mm -hmm. probably. And then now, last year we had... The one I killed was 135, and then we had another that was 135. And then the year before last, we had one on camera that was probably, he was probably pushing 145, 150. Did that 135 last year make it? Yeah, I got pictures of him after the season. Oh, boy, he's going to be a tank. He's going to be big. So I, think he, I think he was a three-year-old. He may have been four, but I think he was three. 135 three. That's yeah, something he's gonna for be, around here. He looked just like the one I killed. Like exactly, I mean, yeah, literally, that's right. I mean, he was like <laughs> the same deer almost. Like, yeah, they could have been. I bet they were. I, I bet it was like could have been like, son or could have been his son. That's why I almost thought like maybe he is four year old because I was like because I knew the one I killed was a four year old. Maybe they were like twins, could like, have been brothers, know, like button buck twins. Yeah, because I was like, dang, they look like identical. Oh. But anyways, uh, yeah, I would say from the first year we had it to now, I'd say it's a solid like average, like the average. Three year olds per mm -hmm. se. Let's say three year old. Average three year old compared to the first year was probably like 110, 105, mm -hmm. 110. It's probably like 115 to 125 now. That's a good jump. And then you have these outliers like that buck that I think he was three and he's probably 135. But yeah, <laughs> you know. <laughs> uh, Golly, she needs to clean her butt. <laughs> That's awful. My but, dad would throw up if he saw that. <laughs> but, anyways. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. You know, up there, I would say your best buck most of the time is going to be 130 inches. It's mm -hmm. hilly country, pine country. If you get a 130-inch deer, it's a good deer, and then you got that 150 to 160 that might walk through every five to seven years. You know? I, just, I don't know about that. I think you're pushing it there. At y'all's place, mm -hmm. once every five to seven, I think, you, I think there's a – I think there's a 150 walking through that area every year. Maybe, yeah, maybe. Probably I, I, because, I mean, yeah. everybody around us manages pretty good, so maybe. I'm going to say another couple of years, you, you'll you have, you know, a couple of them. It just depends if, regularly. Can, if If we could get deer to make it to five and a half, yeah, there'd be a 150 walk through there every year. Mm -hmm. But I would say your four-year-olds are going to be about 130 to 140 on average, unless they're a 10 or 12 point or something. Mm -hmm. Most of them are eights. We get a 10 point every now and then. But, yeah. you know, maybe if they made it to five, we'd def Because, like, 15 minutes away where Dad has the hunting club, mm -hmm. they've had some 150s, 160s, you know. I mean, yeah. re pretty regularly somewhat. Yeah. You know, and, I mean, they're studs. Yeah. But they're, like, four, five, six-year-old deer. Yeah. It's all about yeah. age. Yep, that's why I like old public. You just get out there and see that old two and a half year old eight point, and <laughs> boom, boom, son, let him have it. I know. Like, yep, he ain't got all his teeth, but he'll do just he'll fine. Eat good. That's right. Backstrap good, for days. Yeah, good nice backstrap. Well, you ready to call this one? Yeah, probably yeah. Pretty we're gonna have we're gonna have Mark here in a few days. Going uh, Mark Williams gonna have him on here talking about buck junkies and. Probably talking about our first day's hunting experience, so hopefully it's better than Corey's. <laughs> are you talking about, oh, yeah, because y'all are going to go that Monday? Yeah, we're going to go Monday morning, yeah. Monday and Tuesday. Well, they should be getting to where it's, uh, they're looking for the hens, kind of, shouldn't it? I don't know, man. I got on a gobbler the other evening, and uh, he was he was hand up till, till 7 o'clock p.m., hmm. so... You know, it's, we're, we're right there at that point, though. We're right there at that turning point to where... The hens lay down and the gobblers stay on their feet. Yep. You know, when that happens, that, it, it gets good for everybody. Yep. That's what. That's why I'm hoping I can go out there to Pontotoc maybe in the next week or two or three weeks before the season ends, and hopefully they're somewhat talking. So I went out. Best, best way to kill one, though, is just get out there when you can. Yeah. If you got a free chance, that's just like when it was raining last week mm -hmm. uh, or this week, too. Uh, I just went out there when it broke. Now sometimes I get out there when it would uh, when it would be raining, and I'd try to time it to where I'd have like a boat ride in the rain. I'd get in the woods and about quit, mm -hmm. you know, just watch the re weather real close. And it wasn't that bad. I didn't have far of a ride, so um, 
But you just got to get out there, literally. With, with turkey season, you got to get out there every chance you can because it ain't a four-month-long deer season. Mm -mm. And these birds, they, they get educated quick. Yeah. They get educated quick. Yep. So. Yep. Well, yep. we'll see y'all next week with, was it Mark Williams? Mark Williams. Mark, Mark Williams. Williams with Swine Life. Maybe he'll give us some good cooking tips. You dang right. He's going to cook good at the house. This is one time we're going to have a guest, and I'm going to let him cook more than my wife. There we go. So. That says so. <laughs> That's right. Because Bree can cook. <laughs> yes, she can. That's right. <laughs> All right, y'all. We'll see y'all next week. See you next time. Thank <laughs> you.